Now to our next uh, conversation. The African connectivity and cloud computing market is generating a lot of interest and deals as players position themselves for the boom in data services on the African continent. Over the last four years, international cloud companies have rushed to develop uh, data centers on the African uh, continent. Let's talk now uh, to Naresh uh, Tukani, head of Fabric at Inc. Join us uh, via Zoom. Great to have you on the program. Yeah, hello. Thank you for having me here. So uh, what are your thoughts on the future of uh, cloud computing in the, on the African continent? Yeah, I would say it's uh, exciting uh, than any other word, right? So as you see that, uh, the companies are slowly realizing that uh, given either the COVID situation that we have been seeing in the last two, three years, that there is a, uh, definitely a lot of incentives in terms of uh, leveraging the cloud computing for day-to-day -day operation as well. Uh, previously, when we talked to the clients, it used to be a very tough uh, challenge for them to understand what does it mean, why do we need to really sort of go to your cloud computing, we're all happy with the existing way of doing things. But nowadays, it is not the same, right? They're really working with us in terms of uh, understanding how can we help them in the so-called digital transformation, where the cloud computing uh, is having a very big portion of charge here. And as we see that, uh, if you try to see the, the digitization of how the world is across so far, uh, when you compare it to the, the US, the Europe, Asia Pac, and the African continent, you can typically say that it used to be, the people used to see from an economic perspective as one, 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 zero, right? Zero for the African, not contributing much from the digitalization perspective. But however, the things have drastically changed in the last few years and as we go into the future. So we definitely see that all the companies like Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and the likes of that are definitely investing a lot uh, in the African continent, precisely for the reason that uh, one thing, the companies are understanding the value of that, and secondly, is essentially in terms of the new startups and the young population that is coming within the continent, they obviously need to tap into that um, the potential, and definitely all the, the startups and the new companies that you are seeing out there require some capabilities like cloud computing in terms of uh, innovation and to uh, address the market uh, larger needs, right? So just from that perspective, we definitely see a lot of excitement the company is uh, moving into the cloud computing services uh, uh, in, a, in a very big way as of now. Yeah, it looks like quite an exciting uh, uh, future there, but obviously I'm sure there are some challenges. What, what kind of solutions are, are being uh, preferred? Yeah, so, so if you try to see uh, carefully what is happening in the African continent, we can attribute to the four foundational pillars are improving drastically. So one thing is essentially that huge amount of capacity that is coming into the continent from the subsea capacity uh, perspective, be it like the likes of Google establishing Equiano capacity, or the Facebook working on to Africa, for example, in terms of bringing a huge amount of terabytes into the continent, the subsea capacity. This is definitely going to have a huge amount of pressure price points into the, into the ecosystem, which is good for everybody. The second thing is essentially around, there is a huge amount of terrestrial fiber capacity that is being laid out within the continent. Right, and the third one is essentially about the huge amount of data centers, the co-locations that are coming with in multiple parts of uh, Africa today, uh, which you can see that a significant amount of megawatt of power being uh, uh, from the data center footprint is being largely increased as of now. And the fourth pillar, I would say, is definitely the hyperscalers as we just touched upon. So when you have all these entities that you're coming uh, from the digitization perspective entering into the continent, it is very important for somebody uh, and for the end clients like enterprises to how can you stitch all of these things together? How can you ensure that all the cost economics, the agility, the programmability that you want from this ecosystem, how are you going to eventually get that? Should I work with multiple ecosystem partners, the stakeholders one by one, and then try to stitch my own solution? Again, that will lead to its own uh, increased skill sets, increase in the cost, et cetera. So, so the, the systemic obstacle we can say basically is that how are, when the technology is coming into the Africa, how can you essentially provide that uh, easy transformation for the enterprises to embrace all these technologies. So in that context, the solutions that we are creating from Inc., which is a leading edge solution provider, is essentially that to address that specific solution. So we have recently launched a product called Inc. Fabric, which is going to take away this complexity from the enterprise's perspective. So we are going to work in some context, right, with the underlying ecosystem partners, abstract the complete ecosystem, so that we are going to provide a easy to use interface Essentially, we are calling the Inc. Fabric as network as a service, which means in the cloud world, if you try to spin up a virtual machine, write a compute instance on Amazon in a matter of minutes, you should be able to get that instance in a matter of minutes. 
in the same way, the thought process for us is that when the enterprises have so many pieces to connect together, why can't we ensure that, why can't we connect all the enterprise branches and their multi-cloud requirements in a matter of minutes? So from that perspective, in Fabric, we are trying to decrease that technology barrier for the enterprises to enter into this new world of uh, exciting technologies by providing a single easy to use platform where they can essentially drag and drop the enterprises, click uh, based on the requirements and connectivity in a drag and drop fashion, and they should be able to launch the services in minutes. So in that way, we realized that while the technology is there, somebody has to take that step foot in terms of providing an easy way so that it definitely helps the enterprises innovate. All right, but how do you see you know, cloud computing changing the way Africans uh, do business on the continent? Oh, uh, definitely, right? Uh, as we just touched upon the COVID transformation and the realization about that, so we are significantly seeing a good amount of interest from all the enterprises out there saying that we want to leverage uh, the cloud computing not necessarily from one cloud like Amazon, but they're interested in saying that um, I want to take the best breed of solutions, let us say from Google Cloud, which for machine learning or artificial applications, maybe from RP Cloud for the database and could be from Azure from some other services. So the, essentially the idea for them is that if you go into the future and see all the enterprises will be driven by multi-cloud requirements, having the, because they don't want to get into essentially a cloud vendor locking kind of a situation. So we definitely see a good, a good amount of requirement or connectivity requirements that has to shape up within the continent. Uh, because let us say if you see the, the cloud computing essentially is right now available only in South Africa, in Johannesburg and Cape Town. But the question is, we are talking of a, a continent like Africa, how are you going to cater to the requirements for the West Africa, East Africa, right? So from that perspective, there's a good amount of uh, uh, solutions around edge computing is going to uh, arise in the continent as you go into the future, where they, uh, from the, and the edge computing definitely will help the end clients in a very big way, in a very big way. Uh, because some of the clients have been uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, from the local loss perspective, they have to ensure that the data is resident within their country and not crossing the boundaries. But while the cloud computing is within Amazon in South Africa, how can you not cross the boundary in Nigeria, for example? So from that perspective, the cloud providers are going to bring their cloud agility into the countries like Nigeria and other places, closer okay. to the way the user is, right? So yeah, from that perspective, we see that as we go into the future, edge computing and cloud computing are going to play a very big role, and enterprises are going to leverage the latest technologies like Web 3.0 blockchain, artificial intelligence, as well. All right, well, we'll keep, we'll keep track of the C uh, growth in that sector. Thank you so much, Naresh Chikani, head of Fabric, Inc. Thank you. Thank you very much.